So hey everyone, thanks for coming to my presentation today. My name is Steph Maraca. I'm a fine artist currently living in the South Hills area of Pittsburgh. So I have over 20 years of painting experience, um, but I have four years of experience working full time as a fine artist. Uh, I received my Bachelor of Arts in Studio Arts from the University of Pittsburgh in 2012. I also received a Bachelor of Science in Geology. Uh, and I <laughs> well, after I graduated, I started with geology. I did that for five years and I decided that that was not as fulfilling of a career <laughs> as I thought it would be. So I uh, left geology to pursue a career as an artist. Uh, and I did not have any friends in the art world. I didn't have any mentors at that time. I just kind of went into it blind and I had to learn by trial and error how to be successful and make enough income to support myself so that I didn't have to go back to geology. I wanted to be self-employed and art was the best way for me to do that. So <laughs> just give you a little background. So over the past four years, my most successful art sales have been through marketing and selling my artwork online. And that's why we're here today for me to uh, talk to you guys about how you can also do that. So next slide. Okay, so th these are some examples of my art just to give you guys an idea of what my style uh, of painting looks like. So I create oil and acrylic landscape paintings in a realism style. I'm mostly uh, inspired by golf courses like this one's Pebble Beach in California. Uh, you can click the next slide. Um, and then so yeah, that's an acrylic one of Augusta National Golf Course. You can click the next slide. Uh, okay, this is uh, one of my national park paintings. This one's oil on canvas. That's Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. Yeah, so yeah, I'll travel myself. This one is inspired by one of my own photos. Uh, so sometimes I'll reference photos and work in the studio uh, with a handful of photos and video I'll look at as well because my iPhone picks up lighting better with video, I've noticed, than photos. So sometimes I'll reference video. And then I also will paint in plein air as well. And this one is an acrylic painting of lily pads. This is over in the Poconos area. There was a pretty little pond that inspired me. So, yep, that's just to give you an idea. You can click the next slide. I do not, I have a YouTube channel, which is one of the things we're going to talk about here. So I do lessons on my YouTube channel, uh, but I don't do any in-person classes at the time. And in addition to landscape painting, which is like my main passion, I also do live event painting uh, at weddings. I actually just got back from working one in Los Angeles, California yesterday, <laughs> but this is one of my live event paintings. So I'll go to the wedding. I'll talk to the wedding couple and ask what scene they'd like me to paint. Sometimes it's their uh, first dance like this one. Sometimes it's uh, the ceremony scene or something like that. So we'll determine where they want me to be, what they want me to paint. I'll start it at the wedding and I still keep that same layering method that I do. Uh, so I'll finish the painting back in my studio with a lot more detail. By the end of the wedding, it doesn't usually look that good yet. <laughs> so before we dive into all of the specifics of selling your art online and different social media platforms I sell my art on, let's just talk about some general art business tips. The first thing you guys may have noticed by seeing what I paint is that it's really helpful to have multiple routes of income. So I create original paintings that I sell online. I do live event painting at weddings. Um, I sell artwork at trade shows sometimes, I, I golf trade shows, things specific to my niche. Uh, I sell prints of my artwork online. I have a YouTube channel, so I'm getting money from ads running on my YouTube channel. And we're going to talk about some other things. I have online art galleries I sell on. So it helps to just have as many routes of income as you can, uh, as long as they're bringing you income. If it's something that you're investing a lot of time into and it's not bringing you any income, then you should probably let that go. Uh, next is you want to reach your target audience when you're trying to sell your artwork. It's easier for you to sell art, I think, if you are selling to a specific audience that knows what they're getting when they're shopping from you. Some artists, <coughs> I know a lot of artists in the Pittsburgh area that do, do that. Well, they'll work in different mediums and they'll sell really well and they're, they're just they have to dedicate more time to it though because then they have to find a buyer for this thing and then they have to find a different buyer for this thing. That's a totally different market. So it's easier and less time consuming and can be more successful if you find a target audience to sell your artwork to. Uh, be conscious of your brand. So this is really important with selling your artwork online. Your brand is what people think of when they think of your art. It's how they connect their art to you. Uh, you don't want to put bad quality images of your artwork online with poor lighting and the cropping being wrong. You don't want to have any typos in your description about your artwork um, because if your artwork is priced in the several hundred range and it looks like that and then someone else is priced in the same range but they have better quality work displayed on the website even though the artwork itself might be awesome someone's going to buy from that 
person who has better quality images of their work and a better description and that kind of stuff. So it's really important to be conscious of your brand, think about who you're trying to market to, and make sure your brand reflects that. Uh, good rep record keeping is important. Uh, so I try to be really careful with record keeping, keeping a lot of receipts for everything, um, making sure that I am keeping my clients' names and addresses all saved so that I can reach back out to them, send out postcards to them once a year, that kind of stuff. Uh, building connections with your clients and making them feel special is always a good thing as well. That's how you get good return clients and you just build a relationship with them. All right, so now we can dive into the routes of income. Okay, so this is a pie chart I made of my gross income over the last 12 months uh, and the different routes of income that came in <laughs> for my art business. So as you can see, um, my website brought in the most about almost 60 percent of my income came from selling art on my website and people uh, responding to my email newsletter uh, about 11 percent came from marketing and selling directly on instagram six percent from facebook about four percent from reddit uh, my online print sales so websites that have print to order for prints was about three percent amazon was a tiny amount uh, that's through me recommending products for people to buy and i get a little bit of a commission on that and also I have coloring books published so I get a little bit of a um, markup for every coloring book that sells so that's just a little bit there uh, artfinder.com is an online art gallery that was about six percent of my sales and my in-person sales so trade shows uh, gallery showings exhibitions awards at exhibitions that kind of stuff was uh, almost nine percent and then uh, ads running on my YouTube channel was about two percent of my income so that breaks it down the first thing we're going to talk about is instagram and how you guys can use instagram to sell and market your artwork there's so much information especially with instagram and facebook they've gotten so complicated over the last few years with their business pages you can set up uh, and i don't have time to go through how to set those up so i will have links uh, with information about that for you guys to check up on later too yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the features on Instagram and how you can use that to sell your artwork. Um, so to give everyone who doesn't have Instagram an idea of what it is, it's a platform, a social media platform where users scroll through a feed. Uh, you just scroll on your phone. It's also on a desktop, but most people use it on their phone uh, to scroll through images or videos from accounts that you follow. So. Um, my page is Steph Maraca Fine Art. I follow other artists. I follow golf courses. I follow like country clubs and um, like prestigious vacation rentals near country clubs. I'm strategically following accounts where my target niche also follows those accounts so that I can find those connections. Uh, so Instagram, the algorithm will put photos in a specific order based on a number of factors. So uh, the Posts that'll show up at the top of your feed on your homepage are ones that in the past you've looked at that profile or you've looked at that user's picture for more than five seconds. It, it literally knows how long you're looking at a picture and will put it at the top of your feed if you're staring at those pictures longer than other posts and stuff like that. If you're not getting a lot of engagement on your posts, then they're not gonna show up at the top of that algorithm on your uh, followers pages and you're not gonna get a lot of traffic back to your profile. Uh, so users can like, comment, save pictures or videos, and they can also send direct message uh, to other users on Instagram, and they can now send them, like via text message too, you can send them out and bring people to Instagram to look at it. Uh, users may include a website link in their profile. Uh, so we'll see if my video got in here yet for Instagram. When you go on my Instagram page and you see my profile bio, I have a link tree link. So I'll, I'll tell you guys about that in the email. I'll include that information as well. Um, but link tree is one link that when you click on it, it takes you to like eight links and you can set what all you want those links to be. So I have a link tree link in my page. So you click on that and it'll take you to a new page that says, shop original paintings, shop commissions, shop live event painting, shop art prints, order coloring books. I have all of those links saved under one link. So, <laughs> cause you're only allowed one link on your page. So that's the wiggle way around that. <laughs> uh, it's not always about how many followers you have. So I learned that recently um, 
my, I had this presentation, a similar one to this three years ago, and I completely changed that because it was like, get more followers, you'll get more sales, but that's not the case. I doubled my Instagram following in the last three months and I have not seen any increase in sales. Uh, and that is because I have not been dedicating time to reaching my target audience. And the people that started following me are people from third world countries or people outside of my target niche. Um, like my target niche is basically uh, middle age, upper middle class people in America. <laughs> uh, and uh, there aren't a lot of those people that joined me following my Instagram in the last few months. Uh, so I did not have a lot more sales. So it's not always about how many followers you have, it's about reaching your target audience. Uh, and now you can also link Instagram and Facebook because it's all part of Meta, the big company now. So <laughs> if you can post to one and make it show up on both platforms. So if you are more comfortable on Instagram, uh, you can make your post in Instagram and then there'll be a button at, before you hit post that'll say, would you like to share to Facebook as well? And you hit yes and it'll let you share it to Facebook too. And in Facebook, it's the same thing. You can set it up in your business page, set up a post and then um, you can check, share to Instagram, and it'll share to that too. So you have this wonderful artwork, and mm -hmm. you take video, great pictures of it, and you mm -hmm. post it, mm -hmm. and then people download it and print it themselves. Yes, that is something that you cannot really avoid with the internet. Um, the one good thing about Instagram and Facebook is it automatically brings the file size down to less than, it's like le just under 2,000 pixels. So it, the biggest that they could print it and have a good quality is like eight by 10. They can't really print it that big and ha keep it nice quality. So did you, did you, like I've heard about watermarks and yeah, things like that. Yes, yeah. some people do put watermarks on their artwork on Instagram and Facebook, um, but I personally do not because if I see that, I'm kind of deterred by it and it, you know, I don't really get to see the full visual of artwork. And it's, it's kind of, that's one of the struggling things with selling your artwork online is that people are going to steal it. The, um, Chance of them printing it, reselling it, and making a lot of money on it is very low. Uh, if someone does do that, and, and you have a piece of artwork that you're like, this is great, I want to file a copyright with it, you can file it through the copyright office. I think it's like 60 bucks. I've done that for several of my paintings that I know are gonna be, like my top selling prints, I've done that with. Um, and I haven't, I mean, knock on wood, I haven't had any cases yet where I've seen it out somewhere else on the internet. Um, but I have seen this happen to other artists on Instagram. So, you, I mean, if you do see someone else reproducing and selling your work, then you have to take them to court and do all that not fun stuff, so. Uh, all right, so back to Instagram. This is just like the uh, insights, like the analytics. So these are this is one of my top performing little videos I made on my Instagram page. Uh, it was like about a month ago, yeah, February 25th, that was two months ago. Uh, so it had 45,000 people saw it, which is really good, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 2,000 likes, 33 comments, 106 people mailed it to someone else, like sent direct messaged it to show. Uh, and then over a thousand people saved it, like archived it there. Um, so what was it a video of? Just how you did a painting? Yep, or? it's just a little time lapse. So uh, I'll put my painting up on an easel like this and I'll have my little tripod there and I will record the whole process. And then in my computer, I'll edit that. I'll speed it up 200 times so that it's less than a minute long. Uh, and then I'll put it up on my Instagram, yeah. It's, uh, now you can put a video, I think, up to three minutes on Instagram, but I don't think people's attention is usually held that long, so <laughs> I usually try to keep it under a minute. Uh, and then, yeah, this, so this is just like some of the business analytics. If you create a business profile, it gives you all this information. If you just make a personal page, you can have a personal page or a business page on Instagram. If you have a personal page, it will not give you this information. If you have a business page, it does. Uh, yeah, reach, so it reached 130,000 accounts, but uh, I'm not sure what the difference is between reach and viewed. I guess if it reached them, but they just scrolled past it, then it counts as a reach, but not a view. If they stopped and watched it, then I think it counts as a view. Do you pay for Instagram? You do not. Instagram's a free app to have. Uh, Instagram and Facebook do push on you a lot to buy an ad or you know have an ad run and they'll like give you a credit and stuff like that. Uh, I've tried it in the past and I haven't had a lot of success with the ads running. I didn't get a lot more followers. I didn't get a lot of purchases. So I was like, eh, I'm not gonna waste my time with that. Uh, so that's that. How do you access the analytics? Okay, yeah. so I sort of started a sure, yeah. business page, but I don't really yeah, so if you set the business page, um, whenever my video loads, I think it does show in there, but on your, on your profile page, if you click on a post, right under the post, there are a couple little icons. One of them is a little insights 
icon. And if you click on that, right, it's directly under your image. Then it'll take you to your analytics and your insights for that specific image. So when you are making a post on Instagram, these are just like some helpful things to uh, build your Instagram and make your target audience excited about what you're posting and want to buy from you. So use short, precise description in your bio on your homepage on Instagram. So I just recommend saying something about what you create. So if you create realism paintings, if you create abstract art, uh, if you do clay, you know, just put what you create. Posting good quality photos and videos is really important too. Uh, this is tricky in the beginning because it's hard to know what's good quality when you haven't really experienced all of the feedback from your followers yet. Uh, but look at people that are successful on Instagram, other artists, follow other artists that create similar style work to what you do. Uh, and if they're doing well, kind of mimic what they're doing. If it's, if it's working for them, it'll probably work for you. Next thing down there is uh, use hashtags relevant to your post. And I have an example, if we click the next slide, I think I have, yep. This is an example of one of my posts. So you can see I have a really good quality, just a scanned image. Uh, the file size is brought down, so it's not something someone can print really big, blow up and sell really big. Um, I have the location tagged, so that's important too. If people are visiting that area or they're planning to visit that area and they want to see pictures of what it looks like and you have that tag there, it can show up at the top and then they'll see this and then maybe they'll go on your profile and maybe they'll want to buy a print or something. So that, there's no hashtag that I see at the title up there. Nope, the hashtags, uh, you have to include those, type those yourself with the post caption. So this is all the caption. Let me go right here. This all here is all your captions. So I said, here's my uh, profile name, and then it says Sun Shenandoah Sunset. That's the title of the painting. Then I said, Happy National Park Week. This painting was inspired by an amazing autumn sunset from Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. And then I had a question. What's your favorite national park? That gets people to be engaged in your post and leave comments, which will get that to go higher up on the algorithm on other people's feeds. Uh, and then under that, I just put, I do little spaces to like make the hashtag separate from your caption. You don't have to do that, but I do it just to keep it a little neater and organized looking. So I enter that and then I just do hashtags. You can get up to 30 hashtags. If you do more than 30 hashtags, it will erase your entire caption. <laughs> so don't do more than 30 hashtags. I've learned that the hard way because I've typed, I've typed a caption. I spent like 10 minutes typing it and then I put 31 hashtags and just deleted everything. I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, so like I said, you can ask a question to interact with your fans. What you want to do is just try to boost engagement. So by having those questions for them uh, or telling a story about the artwork, just getting people to interact with you. Like if you visited a national park and you talk about your experience there and like how your hike you hiked and you had to go through this and this and this and then it started raining on you and it was a terrible day but then the sun opened up and you were so inspired that you had to paint it then someone else might be like oh wow that's so awesome i had a similar experience or something like that and then you build connections with people all right we can do the next slide uh so here is another one of my posts uh this one is something that people can buy directly on instagram and this is kind of complicated so you can set up a shop so that people can buy your painting directly on Instagram. They don't have to leave the app. Uh, it's super easy for them, so that can help with building sales. Um, it's just a little complicated to set up. I, I, the only way that I've set it up is through Facebook, and then I have it shared to Instagram as well. Uh, and I'm not sure if there's a way to do it directly on Instagram. I actually just started doing the feature, the shop feature about a month ago, and I haven't sold anything directly on Instagram yet. I have sold calendars through Facebook, and uh, they did take a small cut, and then uh, they send you out a direct deposit, I think it was three weeks later. So it's sold there, but mm -hmm. you have the calendar, so you have to ship yes, it. Yes, you have to ship it, and then they will take you to a page. So once it sells on there, they'll notify you that this sold. Then it'll take you to a page where you have to get the buyer's address, that it'll be already in there, and then you have to mark it as shipped and cl include the tracking number and stuff. So then the, then the app will notify the buyer, and then you the ship it. Um, you pay the shipping, but you can set that cost in there as well. You can say shipping is $10 flat rate, shipping is based on weight, and it'll calculate that and it'll charge them. 
Or you, or you could do, I just do flat rate free shipping for US and I eat that cost, um, just to keep it simple. I'm at, most of my sales actually are through people direct messaging me about a painting. Yeah. And in my posts, I'll, sometimes I'll say, message me if you're interested in purchasing this piece and they'll do that. And then you can also, all in Messenger, you can either say, uh, would you like me to email you and we can go to email and handle all of the information for shipping and payment via email, or would you like to stay in Instagram? Uh, I can send you a PayPal invoice, or I can, you know, I can send a Venmo request or something like that for the payment, or you can mail a check and uh, da da da, how many days have to go by before the check clears, then I'll ship the painting, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, the, the best thing to do to sell on Instagram is just make it easy for your clients to buy a piece of art. So if you don't have a link for them to buy it, you don't have the shop set up, and you don't tell them that it's available to purchase, well, they don't know it's available to purchase, they're not gonna buy it. So <laughs> make it as easy as you can for someone to buy a painting and they will likely buy the painting. Uh, there's a very deba debatable thing about whether you should put the price on your Instagram. And I've seen a lot of fine artists say, never put your price on your Instagram. But Personally, if I were buying a piece of artwork and I was interested in it, I would like to know. Um, and it's nice that it's, it seems more fair, that it's just flat, it's there, and nobody's jacking up the price because of you know what they see on your profile or anything like that. So I personally do include the price on my profile. Yeah, my posts. So looking back at the pie chart here, Facebook is responsible for about 6% of sales. So we're gonna talk about that now. So this is what my Facebook business page looks like. You can have a banner at the top, my logo at the top there. Uh, I have my same image on the profile that I do on my Instagram profile. Uh, Steph Morocco of Fine Art, nice and clear there. Uh, so you wanna make a business page. So you have your own, how many of you have Facebook? They're basically, no you don't. I never, yeah. I set it up and never used it. Yeah, never. okay, well that's all right, yeah. All right, so you probably have a personal page set up. That's like, you know, you see your siblings, your relatives, your friends all show up on your feed. Uh, you need to make a business page, which is totally separate from your personal profile, and make your business page so-and-so fine art, so-and-so paintings, so-and-so charcoal drawing, so-and-so, da-da-da, you know, uh, so that people have your name and what you make, just so that it's pretty clear and obvious without them having to click on it, what they're going to expect, you know, when they see that name, what the page will be about. So I mentioned this a little bit before, your Facebook can be linked with your Instagram account, meaning you post in one place, just click a little button that says post to Instagram and it'll post to Facebook and Instagram. I do all of my posts for Facebook and Instagram through Facebook's business portal uh, and I will schedule them. Like every Sunday I'll sit and I'll make a post for every day for the next seven days, have it scheduled. You can set what time you want your post to go out. Uh, it will tell you the time when your viewers are most active. For me on Instagram, that's usually between noon and 1 p.m. On Facebook, it's usually between 6 and 8 p.m. So it can make those posts go at different times, even though it's the same post on those two different platforms, to be the most effective to reach your viewers when they're actively engaging on the app. Um, you can create photo albums of your artwork for your viewers. So one thing I like to do in my Facebook business page is make photo albums of my commission paintings for every year. So I have like, you know, the year and then commission paintings. So, and I, on my actual business website, I link to my Facebook albums so that people can see on my commissions page some past commissions that I've done without those commissions taking up my whole website. <laughs> I just have a link that they can see them on here. Let's encourage viewers to share your post to boost engagement, build your audience. So on Instagram, um, people can't really share your post. Now they can put it up on their story, which is like a little thing that's up for 24 hours at the top of your feed. Um, but it's not quite the same as Facebook's sharing abilities. So on Facebook, if you see a post and you like it, there's a share button underneath where you can share it to your own profile and all of your followers then see it. And then one of them might see it and they might be like, oh wow, that's nice. I want to share that on my profile. And then all of their followers see it. So it's this big bubble that you can just keep reaching more and more people by people sharing your images. So my, when you make a post and you put it on Facebook and you want it to really get out and be seen and to your target audience, you can say, please share this post, you know, so that people will share it. You have to make it public. Yes, yeah, so your page, if you make a business page, it will be public, oh, yeah. Page will be public. Yep, and if, yeah. so you can have your personal page if you want. You make that post in your business page, then uh, you can go in your personal account, 
view that business page from your personal account and click share. So you can share it to your personal page too, if you want it in multiple places, or you can just post it on the business page and ask other people to share it. Image and mm -hmm. short description. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So uh, you could do just one image and a short description. You could do, it's called a carousel of images. So you could post up to 10 images in one post. So say you want to do a full size image of your painting, then you want to have one of your painting on the wall with a couch on it, and you want to have a zoomed in picture of the painting with a signature on it. You want to have a picture of the painting from this angle, and you want that all included on one post. You can do that. You just you. And then how much text goes with that? Um, so the same amount, of, I think it's the same amount of text you can put on Facebook is what you can oh, put on Instagram. You could put like, I've seen like six paragraphs of people typing text before, but you also keep in mind, you gotta, gotta hold everyone's attention. So if you type a lot, people are less likely to read all that, unless it's something really traumatic, <laughs> you know? People aren't gonna take the time well, to I, read all that. I'm looking at your chart and you're saying you have more I had more sales on Instagram, Instagram yep, than, than Facebook. Facebook. Yep, yep. But the and that's from it's probably because website. I spend more time on Instagram than Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Facebook continued. So you can arrange your page in a format. Uh, so viewers understand what your business is about. So keeping, you know, the title, your name, and then what you create as your business name. Uh, keep it all about your business. Don't put personal stuff on your business page. Um, make it easy for people to purchase from you. So by setting up the Facebook shop, that's really easy for them to purchase directly on Facebook. Um, or by saying, send me a direct message if you're interested or would like to see more images of this artwork, then they can message you. That's only one thing they have to do. And it takes them right to the spot where you can connect with them and get that sale started. Uh, you want to engage with your viewers. So if people ask questions or they're commenting, you want to respond to them. You can request for people to like your page. So if someone shared one of your images and people that aren't already following or liking your page uh, see that and they like one of your posts, you can actually see that they are not following your page and you can send a request for them to like your page. So you can build your uh, page following that way. Uh, share your posts in relevant group and event pages which I'm gonna talk about more in the next slide. And then you can also um, promote any upcoming exhibitions that you're gonna be a part of on Facebook events. This is what my Facebook business page looks like. So you can see I have the shop set up there. That's what my one of my recent posts where I have three images connected to one post. So that can go on here and Instagram. There's, there's my shop there. If someone were to click on it, it can take you right to it. Yeah, the video's playing now, yeah. <laughs> There's another one of my posts there. There's what the top of the page looks like. This is what the shop looks like, where anyone can just click shop, and then if they click on an actual painting, say they're looking at this one, I have a few images set up for that painting with close-ups, so they can see all the details. They can add it to their cart, and then they can buy it right there. If they buy it, I'll get a notification, and then it'll take us through the sale process. This is what my reviews look like. So you can ask for people to review your business. If they buy something for you, they, you can ask for a review on your Facebook page. That'll get more people uh, to want to buy from you if you have more positive reviews. I only have five. I haven't been, haven't been very diligent with that. <laughs> this is our insights. So Facebook also gives you your analytics insights. Um, like I said, it's super complicated now. It has, shows you everything if you really want to know all that. Uh, you can look up videos for what all of these things mean, but these are um, different engagement factors. So yeah, that's what the Facebook page looks like. And I, there's all those different publishing tools, manage your shop, message people. These, this is how you can um, make posts. So these are my past posts and it tells you how many accounts it reached, the engagement, so who clicked on it all that information. That last slide about Facebook is about Facebook groups. So uh, another way I'll reach people on Facebook is by posting my artwork in a specific group. So I just posted today um, a picture of one of my paintings of Vernal Fall in Yosemite National Park in a, park, in a group called Yosemite something, something, something. So everybody that fall, that's in that group loves Yosemite. That's my target audience for that painting. People that visit Yosemite, you know, maybe some of them aren't my target audience. They, they go to Yosemite, but they're not into art or they go to Yosemite and they can't afford that painting, but it's still reaching that group, that general group of people that I want to see that painting. Uh, and then maybe someone will comment on it later saying, oh, is this available to purchase? Or where can I buy a link? Where's the link for prints for this or something like that? Uh, so by posting in groups, 
That's a really good way to get right to your target audience in Facebook. Just make sure that if you post in a group that you are following the group rules because sometimes the rule will say no self-promotion. So if you do that, they will remove your image or they won't even allow it to post. That leads me to Reddit. So Reddit is a lot like Facebook groups where everything in Reddit is a community. Uh, so you follow communities for topics that interest you. So um, whenever we get to the slide too, we'll see more about it. This? Sure, yeah, you can start this. So this is what Reddit looks like. Um, these are some of the groups that I'm following. So this one is art community, just art in general. This is what my profile looks like in Reddit. Uh, not a lot of people go to your actual profile and you don't have to have a huge following on Reddit to be successful and make sales because you're posting directly to your target community in here. So this is in the golf community, just it's r slash golf is what it's called. And I'll post images of my golf paintings, talk more about Reddit. So Reddit's a lot like Facebook groups. Like I mentioned, you have all your communities that you're a part of. So you can, um, you can find these communities same way on Facebook. There's a search bar at the top of Reddit and you search for what you're looking for. Uh, so I, you know, art is a huge one. Um, I don't post in art a lot though, because there are so many people, again, you're competing with so many people that your post rarely gets that, um, interaction because it's one out of millions, you know, <laughs> uh, Appalachia. So that painting I did of the Poconos, I posted that in there. Uh, it didn't perform that well. But you know, it's always like good to dabble and see new groups, try posting in there, which ones perform well, keep posting in those groups. Uh, art store is one where you can just post uh, uh, paintings that are available or artwork that's available. Backpacking is for people that like, you know, backpacking and hiking. Uh, our contest is a community. So if you do a giveaway contest on one of your social media platforms, you can share a link to your giveaway there. So people can then go to your other social media accounts where you're having your contest. Uh, female travels, I like to travel, so that's just a personal one I follow, which could also be a good business one. Uh, Florida, I post a lot of, I make a lot of paintings of Florida landscapes and golf courses, so that's a good one for me to post in. Golf is the biggest one uh, that I've had success with in Reddit. Hilton Head is one, uh, so Jackson Hole, Wyoming. So places that I've created paintings of, those are good things, so thinking about what you create, uh, find groups that that would fit into. Uh, so Reddit is fo focused on specific communities. It's very interactive. As I mentioned, you'll get a lot of comments and uh, questions on your posts. You don't have to have a lot of subscribers or followers on your page for your post to get seen. So what happens is if you put a post out there in a community and someone likes it, they click instead of a like button, it's an upvote button. So, and then if someone doesn't like it, there's a downvote button. So if someone likes it and a bunch of people like it, it'll be upvoted, which just moves it to the top of that feed in that community. You can respond to comments on your post. Uh, a lot of these groups all have rules that say no self-promotion, that kind of stuff. Uh, don't, don't put prices on your things, except for like art store and art. You know, those are the two that they kind of, it's meant for that. They will remove your post if you comment, you know, this is available for this much money. Here's a link to my website. So what I've had to do is if someone asks about buying it, I'll say, hi, I sent you a message to meet the community guidelines. I've sent you that information via a message and then I'll message them and then we'll finish the sale there. You use an interesting or concise description for your post. So you want to engage people uh, talking about your art, like what inspired it, but don't give them, you know, a long, you know, run on paragraph. You want to keep their interest and yeah, reply to the positive comments and message potential clients if someone's uh, inquiring about the art. YouTube. All right. Yeah. The next ones are a little bit, Facebook and Instagram were the most complicated and we took a lot of time with those. The next ones aren't quite as complicated. Uh, yeah, you're good. It's a small percentage of my income, but YouTube channel ads is another great way to get a little supplemental income. Uh, so like actually creating art does, isn't a lot of my time in a week. A lot of it is marketing, marketing and promoting, uh, creating videos about it, going out and doing events, you know, finding uh, exhibitions to enter into and all that stuff. Yeah, probably, probably create well, art like say, three days a week. You know, the rule of thumb is you spend 50% of your time on quote development, mm -hmm. which would be creating your art. Right. 50% of your time on sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. For the live event painting, I have to set up contracts. Oh, I have yeah. to have calls with clients. Like when I set up the contract, 
a few weeks before the wedding, after the wedding, so that takes a lot of time too. Uh, I, I have a YouTube channel. I, I create painting tutorials on my YouTube channel. I will also, um, when I have a piece of art in an exhibition and I go see it, and I go see the exhibition, I will get a quick little video of what my painting looks like, walk around, zoom out, this angle, this angle, just to show off the piece, be like, this painting's in this exhibition, it was juried in, you know, make it seem all important on my YouTube channel. It's just a good way to market your work. Uh, I recently did a series of 18 paintings, one of each golf hole at the Augusta National Golf Course. Uh, so I made a video about that, just like walking by the wall, getting a close up of every single painting, and then just making a little video displaying that. Uh, my tutorials are usually more uh, beginner to intermediate level oriented. Uh, so I try to keep them at an hour to two hours or less in real time. Sometimes uh, I'll just do like a video where I did a painting, it took me 40 hours, but I want to condense it down into a 15 minute video. I'll speed up the video like a lot and just talk voiceover, just saying I did this, then I did this, then I did this. Here's what the painting looks like. Um, so yeah, getting those viewers is great for print sales. So some of those people, I'll put a link under those videos saying here's where you can order prints of this painting. So some of those, um, the print income comes from YouTube as well because it's just if someone ordered a print, I put it under that print income number. Um, but some of them are finding me on YouTube and I'm primarily just, that pie slice is mostly just from my ad revenue. So they can search for a video, you can watch videos on uh, the home screen from people that you're subscribed to. If you have more subscribers, you're gonna get more views on your videos in general, and that's gonna um, have more traffic to your website and any sites or uh, prints that you link in the description under your video. You can also add a link to your website in your video that'll pop up as they're watching it, and you can earn money from YouTube running ads on it. These are analytics. The way you make money is once you get a thousand followers and 4,000 watch hours in a year, then you are able to be monetized. And that's, so you have to meet those, that criteria first before you can make any money. Sometimes it takes a few months. Sometimes it takes like 10 years. It depends on how well your videos perform. Uh, and that is based on the quality of your videos. If people are searching for what you're posting, um, if it's something that is shareable that other people want to share with each other. I have two YouTube channels. My art channel does not perform as well as my travel channel because people are searching for the things on my travel channel more than the painting tutorials that I post. Yeah, so if they're subscribed to your channel, uh, then whenever they just go on YouTube, they don't have to be looking for your videos. They're just on YouTube. Your videos will pop up under their subscriptions mm -hmm. thing. So then they'll see, oh, I haven't seen this video yet that she posted. I want to click that and watch it. So by subscribing to someone, you're saying, I liked that video I just saw, or I just watched a few of your videos and I like what you have and I want to see more. So I'm going to subscribe to you so that I get notified and your videos pop up on my feed. So it's, okay. it's the same way as like following someone on Facebook or Instagram. People are more likely to watch your videos if they're subscribed to you because it'll show up on their feed. Um, you, you don't have to, they don't have to be subscribed to you to watch your videos, but you're more likely to get money and views when people are subscribed to you. So here it is. Okay, make money on YouTube. So pay attention to your analytics that'll show up in your YouTube. Uh, is anybody interested in making videos on their art and having a I'm YouTube channel? About how this works. Just curious? So okay. Yeah. Good, okay, that's, that's good. So, all right, so the way you make money on YouTube is uh, without selling any art is by YouTube and Google, Google owns YouTube. So um, they will send you a check every month based on how many ads played on your videos, how many people watched your videos, saw the ads, and they'll keep track of all that on their end. If they click the ads, then I think you get a little bit more of a percentage. Uh, it's all calculated by them and they'll just send you a check every month for if you hit the $100 threshold, they have like thresholds that you have so to hit. Yeah, you can also recommend products. So in my videos, I'll talk about, I use this brand of oil paint. You can get that in the link below. And then in the description, I'll have a link for that oil paint. And then they could, it takes them to Amazon. If they buy it on Amazon, then I will get a little commission for it. So that's another way to make money. All right, and then if we go back to the beginning, <laughs> This is the community tab. So the, I did a plein air painting in California this weekend oh, wow. before the this wedding. Weekend? Yeah. When? <laughs> on Friday. I was, yeah, Friday I did that. And then Saturday I worked. Friday. Yep, yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's part of the landscape. Thank you. 
So it's just running the, uh, it's just playing the video. So this is, um, the, this is the, your dashboard and your analytics. So I covered up how much money I made in the last month just to you know be private there. But it uh, shows you your top performing videos. So you can see you know how well those are doing, how many views they got. I love the YouTube community. People are super nice. Um, people keep coming back every week to comment on your videos and your art. And you can watch their channel videos as well. And it's, it's a really nice, tightly knit community. Uh, I've found a lot of friends over in the UK on YouTube. So like you make a lot of new friends this way. So it, my last video that I posted was my best performing one in the last, out of the last 10 I posted. Why, what, what made it special? I have no idea. <laughs> you, it's, it's just a, a tutorial of, a painting tutorial acrylic of a kid building a sandcastle on the beach. And it, so the reason why it uh, got more views is because YouTube recommended it to more people which I have no idea why, <laughs> but it did. So yeah, that's why that one performed better. Sometimes you don't really know, but it does tell you like what source all the viewers came from. So that one was, that source primarily came from YouTube recommending it. <laughs> it could be from people searching for it, YouTube recommending it, um, people finding it externally, like on different websites, if someone shared it. So, yep, tells you where it came from. All right, so that's YouTube. We can go back to the slides. All right, so now we've come to online print sales. Uh, so I use print to order websites where I just upload an image of my artwork and those companies will then print it when someone orders it and they'll ship it. And all I do is I get a check once a month for a markup that I put on all of those sales. So it's pretty oh, straightforward. Wow. Fine Art America is the one I use that is, has been the most successful for me and they have the best quality. Yeah, next slide, yep. So Fine Art America is this one. Uh, yeah, like I said, their quality is better than any other print order website I've tried using before. So I recommend them um, when I'm selling prints to my clients. I order from them too when I am creating, uh, when I have prints in some of my wedding packages, I'll just order the prints from here because it's straightforward, it goes right to the client and I, I can count on the quality. They print it and mail it to them? Yep, so they do all the work. Print, not, mm -hmm. a, not a, like a digital Correct, print. yep, they'll print, they have actually have G clay printers and they'll print it on um, acid-free archival fine art paper. And they can also print on canvas too, which is nice, and on metal. Uh, so yeah, here's what my Fine Art America profile looks like. I create, um, you can upload individual images and that's like the far left there's images under my picture. That's images. This one's collection, so that's what you're seeing here. So uh, images that fit into a specific category, I create these collections. It's just like a folder of um, paintings that fit in that category. Uh, so people that come to your print shop will see that. And then they, so I have the Augusta National Golf Series is that one. Um, Acadia National Park is one. Just general national parks is one. General golf courses is one. Hawaiian landscapes is one. So if someone's looking for something specific, they can click on that and see all of the paintings I've made um, related to that topic. So Fine Art America ha is kind of like a social media platform if you want to use it that way. I don't use it that way, um, but you can connect with other artists who also upload their art on there. Uh, there are community contests that people create, um, like paintings with the color red is an example of a contest someone might make. So if you have any images of a painting that has a color red in it, you can add it to that contest and more people will see it that way. Uh, there also are groups related to your art that you can add, you can tag your painting to be a part of that group. So it'll show up in that groups page on Fine Art America. Those can help get some sales, um, but I don't, I don't really know how, how well. <laughs> Probably depends on how involved you are and how much time you dedicate to it. So the public can view your work, order prints and products with your artwork printed onto it. It's free to create a Fine Art America page if you have less than 30 images. Once you have more than 30 images, then it's $30 a year, which is really cheap because if you make your markup on an eight by 10 inch print be $10, you only have to sell three of those to make that money back and then you're making a lot more on top of that. Uh, so the more visitors you get to your page is probably gonna equal more print sales as long as you have good quality work listed up there. Uh, on your main profile page, if anyone goes to view it, they can see all of your social media links and they can also see how many um, views to this page there have been. 
And then the nice thing about Fine Art America is they will do all the marketing and advertising for you. All you have to do is upload it to that site and they'll run ads like on, like cookies. They use the cookies and they'll run ads on other people's, like if they're searching for this thing, it'll pop up on other websites they're browsing and then they'll click on it and they might wanna buy your artwork. You can say that the original is available, but you can't sell the original directly on here. It'll let them message you and it'll send an email to you saying this person's interested in your original painting, is it available? So they can do canvas prints, framed prints, just art prints on paper, poster paper prints, metal prints, um, on wood, they can do greeting cards. So you just upload your image. I try to keep it around 25 megabytes, the size of the image. You know what you've sold? I sell, yeah, yeah. So every time you sell something, you'll get an email notification that someone ordered a print of this uh, and it doesn't give you any of their information. It doesn't say this is their address or anything like that because they handle all that. It just says, it might say the like city name and that's it. I have not sold a single yoga mat yet because the yoga mats are really expensive. Their base fee is like 50 bucks and then your markup on top of that. Yeah, I sell a lot of I sell a lot of puzzles and I sell a lot of prints. I sell a lot of framed prints too. Here is, uh, th so when you go to upload an image, it'll say prints and it has all the size options you can do. I usually don't do the bottom one because that's kind of getting close with the pixelation when it's that what is that 48 by 48 you know that'd be that'd be cutting it pretty close and i don't want it to look pixelated so i just don't put anything there and it doesn't even offer that as an option yep you get to set your markups yep and it'll have recommendations like it'll say we recommend you set this markup at one dollar and i'm like no i'm not setting it at one dollar yeah and you don't want to set it too high though because then no one's going to buy anything <laughs> yeah so you got to find a sweet spot there okay so other print order websites fine art america is my favorite one but there are a lot out there uh, Zazzle is one, Cafe Press, Society6, Threadless, Visual, and Redbubble. So this image here is from my Redbubble site. Uh, yeah, so I actively only use Fine Art America and Redbubble. And it's just because it's time consuming to upload to every single platform. And after a while, not making any sales on some of those other ones I've tried, I'm like, nah, I'm just going to cancel this. I'm going to remove all my images and just keep it on these two. But yep, those are other print order options you can try out any of those if you're interested. All right, uh, next route of income is artfinder.com. Uh, this is an online art gallery. You have to, you cannot go to the next slide. You have to get accepted. It's like, it's not really like, it's kind of like jurying in, I guess, to have your artwork available to sell here. Um, but someone will review your application. I think you have to include a resume and some examples of your artwork, and it can take up to five months for them to approve you. Uh, but if you do get approved on the website, it's an awesome website. It's uh, very user-friendly, it's very well organized, and uh, they have subscriptions set up anywhere. It could be free to $12 a month and they're just like right on point every time when they bill you for that. It's very clear with a receipt and everything. I really like them. <laughs> they're uh, based in the UK. That's where they started out, but now they're global and there are a lot of buyers in the US now. Uh, when I first started my Art Finder account two years ago, I didn't make any sales in the first year, uh, probably because most of the people on that, on that website were shopping overseas and didn't really find me. Um, but once I made that first sale and got a review, it just kept kind of going from there. So you get the hardest sale is the first one so on this. Originals, prints, or what? Original paintings, yes, good question. Yep, so I only sell original paintings here. There we go. Okay, so this is what your dashboard looks like, like your homepage on Artfinder once you get an account set up. Uh, it tells you how many artworks you have on the site, how many have sold? So I had 76 posted, 24 of them have sold on Artfinder alone. Uh, how many people liked your art? How many people follow you? Top countries that your followers are coming from. So US, UK, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine. what's under that? Russia, Russia? <laughs> and Italy are my top countries uh, that support me. And then my recent followers and what country they're from. So it's cool that it's global. Mm -hmm. uh, it tells you if someone adds something to their cart, which people add things to their cart and never buy them all the time. And it's so frustrating. I'm like, just buy it. Yeah. <laughs> it also tells you uh, within the last week, how many orders you sold and what they sold for. Uh, yeah, the more positive reviews you get, the more sales you keep accruing. Okay, so this is an original. So yeah. they're somewhere in the internet. So then right. you have to ship the pain. Yes, I ship the painting, correct. So once a painting sells, I get an email, congratulations, you sold a painting. Uh, and then you click on this, it says click this link to be taken to the site. And then the site tells you all of the information about the buyer, their name, address, uh, email address, 
all that information. Um, they already paid on their end. You don't get that money right away. You get that money like three weeks later, ArtFinder sends you out money. Uh, they take like a 33% commission for your sales. And, uh, and you, you have to pay for the shipping. Yes, but you can, you, you set up your shipping costs. So I do set up shipping costs on here because they take a commission. <laughs> if they didn't take a commission, I would do the, yeah, yeah. But overseas you can set different price. So yeah, yeah. For overseas, the shipping is like in the hundreds range, but for shipping are in the U S I mean, are these canvases that you have? Yeah, they're, they're canvases. Yeah. 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 Then you got to do customs when you ship overseas too. And that's a pain in the butt, but yeah, that's <laughs> targeted at selling original artworks. Yeah, they jury you in and they, they want that, uh, you know, their brand is important. So they want to make sure they're only selling quality things too. Uh, there are websites, Saatchi is one I'll mention later, where you don't have to be juried in. You can sell your artwork originals directly on that website without being juried in. Okay, so last but not least, the big, big one, website and email newsletter. Uh, so my website is stephmaracafineart.com. My name, fineart.com, nice and simple. People can find me. Uh, I have my signature pretty legible as Steph Maraca on my original paintings. So if someone is visiting a house where somebody else bought an original and has it on the wall and they see Steph Maraca, maybe they just want to look up Steph Maraca, this will pop up on the search feed. So they'll find that pretty easily. Uh, so I recommend if you're creating your own artist website to include your name in the website just so that it's easy to connect you with your art and for them to find you. This is a Webflow website. So there are a lot of different things out there to create websites through. Webflow is one of them. Uh, I don't know a lot about making the website because my husband's company <laughs> made the website. Um, so he got the website set up for me. He sends me a bill every month to pay like the fees to keep the website up and running. He set it up in a nice way so that I can edit things myself. And I'll show you guys a video of uh, going through my website. But anytime I have a new painting I want to make available to sell on my website, I can do that. I just upload it and then I can also alter text if I want to increase the pricing on my commissions I can do that myself I don't have to bug him every single time I need to change to my website so that's nice uh, and I recommend if you have a website finding a way to do that as well so you are in control because artist websites change a lot if something sells if something new is available it's constantly changing so it's good if you can have more control over your website uh, without having to bug your developer <laughs> I have Shopify incorporated into my website. So Shopify is a way for people to buy things, add them to their cart, and then check out directly on my website. I have to pay a monthly fee to have Shopify. Uh, so I pay a monthly fee for that. It just makes it easier for people to buy paintings. Uh, so people buy directly from my website. And Shopify, I think they take a small, very small cut too. I don't, I don't know anything about search engine optimization, honestly, but somehow my live event painting is really high on there because I get multiple requests a day for people to get for a live event painting. And it's always Pittsburgh, Philly, somewhere in New Jersey, New York City region, the Poconos and Detroit. And then, yeah, this past weekend, I was just in Orange County, California for someone that found me and they are searching for me. I asked them how you found me. Oh, I Google search live event painters in my area and you popped up. So you're that's, not in their area. Nope. California. Nope. Uh, and so one thing that I think helps though, is that if I did one in the past, so I've done several paintings in the past in Detroit, when I do one, I post a picture of it on my website and I talk about it and I mentioned Detroit. So I think that Google somehow is being like Detroit live event painter. It's on the same page. Let's recommend this trying to get people on my newsletter. So they're always seeing once a month, all those new paintings that are out and getting more opportunities to sell. And that newsletter is an email thing. Yep. Like Yep, set up through MailChimp, it's called, yeah. This is my About the Artist page. You wanna do a little write up about, you know, what inspires your work, when you started painting, if you have a degree in art, uh, and then your list of exhibitions that you've been a part of. Uh, you could put a CV in there as well if you want. And then in my commissions page, I start the top off with some positive reviews talk about my commission process, have the commission pricing listed, and then just give a little bit more information about what to expect if you order a commission. At the bottom, I have a contact form. When they fill this out, it'll automatically send me an email saying what size they're thinking of and their description, and then I'll respond back to them asking if they have reference photos, and all that information will get that all figured out. Uh, this is my gallery. Those, so those are original paintings that are available. If you click on a painting, then it'll show you a description about it, the cost, uh, all of 
the images I have for that specific painting, and then you can scroll under it, and there's an add to cart button. That's the Shopify um, implemented into my website there. Then there's my cart. They can just click checkout, and it'll take you to a checkout page where it asks for uh, your shipping address, your credit card info, and all that stuff. If someone makes a purchase, I'll get notified via email and then I will have to ship it out, include the tracking information, then that will send a notification to the buyer that it's shipped and then they're all good from there. All right, so I didn't have this in my pie chart because it's really hard to keep track of uh, sales on Pinterest because Pinterest is all about posting an image and then having a link under, in that image that people that takes people to another website. So unless someone specifically told me, oh, I saw this on Pinterest, that's the only way that I would know if it came from Pinterest uh, because it takes them to the other website where they'll then fill out the form on my website so then I think it's coming just from my website or it'll take them to a link of an Instagram picture I posted and then they'll just say something on Instagram so then I think it's coming from somewhere else. So some of my sales likely were involved with Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest shows you analytics. Uh, it's really easy to make a Pinterest account too. You just make a profile and just upload pictures of your art and you don't even really say a whole lot about it. You can just say like the title, what it is, and then post it. You can still use hashtags if you want. Um, that might help draw a little few more people to your specific image if they're looking for that hashtag. Uh, it tells you how many followers you have, uh, how many monthly views. So I rarely post on Pinterest now. The last one I posted was in January and I'm still getting 64,000 people looking at my Pinterest page, like pay, pins every month, even though I like never go on it. So people are still finding it. Uh, it doesn't, you don't have to keep posting every day like you do on Instagram and Facebook. On Instagram and Facebook, the algorithm kind of like, you'll go down on the algorithm. You won't be as important after 24 hours your post isn't really as big. Uh, some On fa Facebook, it seems like it lasts like a week. On Instagram, after a day, it's kind of like, if they didn't see it in the first day it's up, they, they aren't likely to see it. Pinterest, if you post it, someone might not even see it until, and YouTube. Pinterest and YouTube, you could post something and then three months later it becomes popular. So now let's just talk about some platforms that I do not use, but they might work for you guys. Just thinking about your own target audience, who you're trying to appeal to and sell to. One of these might be better, they are not my target audience, or I just haven't tried doing it yet. Um, but Twitter, uh, for me, Twitter isn't really that great for selling art because it's more about words than images. Uh, Etsy, a lot of people have been super successful on Etsy. I personally just haven't really given it the time. I haven't really tried. So uh, I, I would recommend it because it seems like some people have a lot of success with it. eBay, a lot of people sell art on eBay. I do not. ArtPal is one that I just uh, recently discovered, but I haven't tried. OnlineGallery.art, have not tried that one. TikTok, as I mentioned, is just more of the younger crowd, not my target audience, not really who I'm trying to sell to. NFTs, has anybody heard of NFTs? No. So an NF, yeah, so, yeah, so NFTs are, they, that stands for non-fungible token. And uh, that's a whole nother presentation. I haven't really, um, I haven't sold any NFTs yet. I'm in the process of getting my artwork converted into NFTs and getting up on some sites. You could also sell NFTs. That's a way to also bring income. Sachi is like ArtFinder, but it's not juried. You can just post and sell your art. Uh, I've sold one piece on there. And then after that, I wasn't getting a lot of traffic. So I just removed everything and just stuck with ArtFinder because it was more successful. Singulart and Art Please. Those are things you can look up as well because I don't have a lot of experience with those two. All right, next. Uh, so then these slides are pretty straightforward. You guys can read more about them, but just like additional tips, you can post a giveaway on one of your social media platforms. I don't recommend giving away original art because that can devalue your work, but I recommend um, maybe prints or uh, note card sets or things like that. Just offer a giveaway and try to get people to share the giveaway contest to other people if it's on Facebook. So that just brings more people to follow and like your page. Ask them, say that if you want to be entered into the contest, you have to like this page you have to follow me and that'll get your following number up if you're trying to build that up in the beginning you want to post often but not too often if you're building it up don't post 20 things in a day try to go i wouldn't do more than one post a day uh and then yeah let put let your followers and subscribers know if you have upcoming events tell them about your recent accomplishments you kind of have to like toot your own horn and like talk about your own success some additional tips for marketing and selling your artwork online is don't expect to sell $100,000 in print sales and original paintings your first week. It takes a lot of time, dedication to build up your following on your social media, find your clients, build relationships with your clients. 
It's not gonna happen overnight. Make sure you're constantly being engaging with your audience, your followers, your subscribers, your clients. Make sure you're not an overly aggressive salesperson. You don't wanna push anyone into buying your art. You want them to buy your art because they love it, not because they're forced into buying it or made uncomfortable. Also, don't post anything on these social media platforms that is not related to your art. So the second to last one just says, uh, I recommend getting a tripod, uh, having a good quality camera to take pictures of your art, having a scanner. If you um, want to sell prints of your art, you should either have a high resolution you know, images from a photograph or a scanner. How do you scan an oil painting? Uh, after it's Unless fully dry. It's completely flat. Yeah, yeah, so it's really easy to do the ones on can canvas panel because they just fit right in there. Uh, but the bigger ones, I have them that's off a little bit and then it's... Um, you digitally cut yeah. and paste. Yeah, yeah, cut and paste. Yeah, and slice it and then edit a little bit, yeah. You can get things professionally scanned, but if you're gonna do that, I recommend, you know, you increase the price of the original to help, you know, accru yeah, make up for the cost of getting things professionally scanned. All right, guys, that concludes my presentation on marketing and selling your artwork using social media and the internet in 2022. This will likely apply in the year 2023 and possibly in 2024 as well. I know the internet is constantly changing, so some of these algorithms and social media platforms are going to change over time, but in general, this has been a successful strategy for me over the past five years, so I hope that it helps you sell some artwork as well. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any additional comments or questions, you can leave a comment under this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my art-related content like this. Have a great day. Happy painting, drawing, sculpting, creating, whatever you like to do. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.